And now an up-to-the-minute report on the Skylab astronauts, the world's longest space travelers. They splash down in the Pacific, and Morton Dean has this report from our New York Space Center. Walter, Wally Shiraz with me, and we're watching a replay of 30 seconds before splashdown in the Pacific, some 220 miles southwest of San Diego. Splashdown was almost on the button, six miles from the ship, eight seconds early, which is one second earlier than the last uh, Skylab mission, Wally, so they're improving. <laughs> I guess they would be in that sense. You, uh, it's awfully hard to predict the rate of descent. Uh, the atmosphere can vary, but it's kind of nice to come in early anyway. They hit the water at about 19 miles an hour, and one of the astronauts radioed back. It was a good, solid smack, but not too bad. And there we go. There's that smack right there. Splashdown. That's kind of consoling, though, when it is all over, because you realize that you've done your job, and they've done a fantastic job. These pictures are now live. This is the command module out in the Pacific. We should say, Wally, that the spaceship landed upside down, and yes. the astronauts had to infloat a couple of airbags in order to write the command module, and that took just a few seconds. They have reported they're okay, but still we're having some sort of communication problems, or at least the Navy is, or NASA is, between the ship and the command module, but they do know that the men are okay. And of course, the uh, swimmers can relay messages back by giving a thumbs up signal, and uh, I'm sure everybody's quite satisfied that they're in good shape. They've got the flotation collar around the command module, so that's okay, and now the swimmers are inflating their uh, life rafts. Communication's okay now is the word. The astronauts will stay in the command module till it gets on board the ship. It has been in the water about 18 minutes, uh, 16 seconds now, the spaceship has. Should take a total of 35 to 40 minutes to get it aboard the USS New Orleans. We'll be back later on in the show. Wally Sharaf, Morton Dean at CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. Yes, we'll have a further report on Skylab later in this broadcast. We now return to Morton Dean and Wally Shiraw in our space headquarters for another report on the Skylab splashdown. Wally, I think we'll repeat what we said before, that the three astronauts should be mighty happy they took seasickness pills uh, <laughs> before this. They've been on the water 35 minutes, uh, 35 and a half minutes so far. NASA had said it would take at least 35 minutes to get them aboard the USS New Orleans, and it uh, certainly will take them a bit longer than that. We particularly feel this sense of closeness in the spacecraft because it's humid the air comes from the outside it's brought in through ducting and blown over your face but it's uh, i think it was 63 degrees fahrenheit out there which isn't exactly a hot day but it's kind of stifling and then you can see the motion that the spacecraft's going through it's not as i've always said a very good boat <laughs> they're pulling the line from the ship taut now at least it looks that way and they'll hook that there's a, something called a mercury hook on that line and they'll hook that to the top of the spacecraft the ship will move alongside and lift it on board the men are still in the command module it's reported they say they are in good shape although communication either from the ship to us or from the command module to the ship to us isn't too good we haven't heard too much from the astronauts themselves 59 days Wally and this concludes what may turn out to be the most the best flight from a scientific point of view oh, it uh, in the history me. of space it space does travel. amaze me how much data they've got on board i think you had some numbers of how many film shots they took but well 18 miles of magnetic tape readings of earth resources they have about 94,000 frames of film of the sun and the earth and uh the solar astronomers uh, are just giddy with anticipation they say that uh, that a revolution is upon them in terms of their science. This is all good new data that we've been paying for. I, I really do believe that the data you see aboard this command module and hopefully the next will be a great payoff to man here on Earth when we think of the energy crisis and everything else. And it isn't a flight uh, that has had no trouble. They've had some trouble on board, Wally. That's it for now. Morton Dean and Wally Shira from CBS News Space Headquarters, New York. The waves buffet that spacecraft, and the space agency still calls it stable, too. But that's the way it is. Tuesday, September 25th, 1973. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News. Good night. Twelve I reckon. The sky of astronauts arrived in San Diego today in what doctors called surprisingly good shape after almost two months in space. They fly home to Houston tomorrow. 
They'll see their families there, but otherwise be in limited quarantine for about a week. Skylab astronauts Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lausma splashed down in the Pacific Ocean tonight, right on time and right on target, which ended the longest journey into space that man has ever made, 59 and a half days. They overcame obstacles that threatened to wreck their mission, and they did a lot of important scientific work. Jim Hartz reports on the splashdown. The Skylab astronauts are down and safe bobbing in the Pacific Ocean, 225 miles southwest of San Diego, California. Alan Bean, Owen Garriott, and Jack Lausma, the new world record holders for spaceflight duration, are apparently in good condition. Splashdown came at 6.20 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It was well within sight of the recovery ship. Weather, wind blowing, choppy seas, scattered clouds. There was a hurricane 700 miles south of the landing site, but did not affect the flight. The men had been in space 59 and a half days, more than twice as long as any men before them. And that was Splash. At the moment, swimmers are preparing, this is a live picture from the Pacific, swimmers are preparing the capsule to be brought on board the deck of the carrier. The astronauts, besides bringing themselves home, and some people think they are the most important experiments on Skylab, brought back 77,000 pictures of the sun that could be taken only from space, 17,000 pictures of the Earth, and 18 miles of magnetic tape from dozens of experiments on board the Skylab workshop. few minutes the astronaut should be on board the carrier once the spacecraft is brought on board the hatch will be opened and doctors will check the astronauts physical condition if it is determined that they are in good shape healthy and able to they will get up and walk out walk across the deck about 50 feet to what is called a Skylab medical laboratory where they will stay be shipped back to San Diego and then flown to Houston on Thursday if they are not able to walk, they could either be carried on stretchers or they could ride in makeshift chairs that will be provided on a forklift on board the carrier. The Skylab workshop itself remains in orbit to be manned again by the third and last crew sometime in November. Jim Hartz, NBC News, New York. The Skylab 2 astronauts are about to end man's longest space flight and splash down in the Pacific. We have a report from science editor Jules Bergman. After 59 and a half days in orbit, the Skylab 2 crew are in the final moments of their journey home. Our live cameras aboard the prime recovery ship, the USS New Orleans, have just picked up the three main parachutes of their Apollo command module, nearly ready to splash down in the Pacific some 220 miles southwest of San Diego. The chutes opened normally a few minutes ago. It's cloudy and hazy in the South Pacific here, and the sea is rough, rougher than we can ever remember for any splashdown in all 29 U.S. manned space flights. But the Apollo crew, the Skylab crew, Commander Alan Bean, Jack Lausma, and scientist Dr. Owen Garriott have already radioed ahead that they feel they're in good shape. The recovery ship, the New Orleans, has locked on with radar, and now they're in visual contact, and the splashdown is going to be very close to the uh, recovery vessel. It looks to us about four or five miles away. We're getting this live picture from satellite transmitters aboard the USS New Orleans, a landing pad helicopter ship of the US Navy, the prime recovery vessel for this Skylab 2 mission from the Pacific, some 220 miles southwest of San Diego. Live picture of the final moments of this 59 and a half day long record-breaking Skylab mission. The longest journey any men have ever made into space. And the big question is how well Alan Bean, Jack Lausma, and Owen Garriott will come through. And now we're getting late word from the ship. The chutes are going to splash down right now, six miles from the bridge of the New Orleans. There's the splashdown. Rough seas are landing almost exactly on the target point. Uh, and you can see how rough by the trouble the ship has stabilizing its posi position and the way the cameras bob about. The big question is whether the spacecraft will stay upright or go over and into the stable two position, as NASA calls it, and require special flotation balloons to upright it. And the bigger question is how well Alan Bean, Jack Lausman, and Owen Garriott, all three of whom were sick getting into space, sick from motion sickness until the fifth day, how well they'll do in those rough seas. 
There are six to eight foot waves rolling there, swells five to seven feet high, a wind up to 20 knots, and no shortage of whitecaps, as you can see. The 18,000 ton New Orleans itself is having trouble maintaining position. It's a, a comparatively new vessel, only five years old, but bobbing about like a cork in that rough Pacific. And that rough sea is caused by the outer force of Hurricane Ira, now churning south of these live pictures from the New Orleans, churning off the western Mexico coast. As a matter of fact, after they separated from the Skylab 2 space station and did their deorbit burn, they were told they had to land through a sucker hull, a hole in the clouds. We've yet to hear direct voice from Bean, Lausma, and Garriott, but the recovery carrier, helicopters tell us they have heard word that the men are okay. That is the live picture from the camera helicopter. That's the word. Skylab 2 and the astronauts apparently in good shape after splashing down 59 and a half days long in the mission. This is Jules Bergman at ABC News Space Headquarters in New York. The Skylab 2 astronauts slept late today aboard the recovery ship USS New Orleans and awoke just as the New Orleans entered the port of San Diego. After breakfast, the men underwent six hours of medical examination and physicians said they already were adapting to the gravity of the Earth after their 59 and a half days in space.